my name is Sebastian Risser, heading operational excellence for PNC property and casualty business at Swiss Re. Last year, it was the, uh, the executive for the markets of Eastern Europe that was speaking to you from Swiss Re's side. Why is somebody now sending me to a conference like this? And uh, one key thing here is that Swiss Re heavily focuses on technology. Uh, as the last speakers just said, it's a huge business, right? And it's a huge opportunity and we need to leverage this. So uh, what I want to show you today is how can we make this technology real? So I want to give you two examples. Uh, and these two examples, you see that? Uh, are really trying to show how this technology can be used for us internally at Swiss Re, but also how our customers can uh, benefit from this. So the Strategic Motor Market Analyzer is a tool that we're actually selling to our customers, uh, obviously at the right price. This is not holding right. Whenever we start talking about the price, it uh, falls apart. Um, so th uh, this is something that uh, we use internally, but also our customers. And in fact, uh, what Michael just said, there might be another idea in there. Uh, and uh, the second item is something at the other end of the spectrum. It's something that we're using within Swiss Re. It's called uh, the Claims Development Tracker. And it's a way for us as a reinsurance company of evaluating um, our claims better. Uh, now, this is very reinsurance driven but you might get an idea of what this can mean to the insurance industry. Okay, strategic motor market analyzer. Great word, a horrible uh, acronym. Where are we right now? How do we figure out how many uh, car accidents are happening in Spain? I use Spain just because I didn't want to insult anybody from Eastern Europe, uh, but obviously you can apply this everywhere. Uh, the present situation, and again, this is very hard to read, is that we're using our internal proprietary data to figure out where are these accidents happening and how many are out there. And based on that, we can map this out. But it's very uh, at a very high level. Uh, so you can see here, Madrid right in the middle, uh, you don't see any details around this. You don't read are the accidents really happening. So what we're doing is actually, we're using globally available data um, that is mapping out each country by a 20 by 20 kilometer. We can go way more detailed, in fact we can go down to a road level, uh, and based on that we're taking, again, publicly available data. So this is weather patterns, number of tunnels, number of intersections, um, light distribution at night, uh, other metrics as well, and based on that we can map out where do these ha accidents happen. And based on that, we can be very, very granular, right? We can say very specifically, where do the accidents happen? How many are there? And one step further, the severity. So um, how big are these accidents and how much are they costing us? So the frequency combined with the severity allows us to get an overall risk assessment of these uh, um, accidents happening. Now, you can see here, there's actually quite a big difference. Right, uh, in Madrid, uh, we have plenty of accidents. Uh, I think somebody just mentioned that, right? Uh, but these accidents are quite small. It's these fender benders. Uh, I, by the way, I once uh, drove a, a big SUV through Madrid, uh, but it had a scratch on the side of the car, and uh, everybody avoided me. Uh, I think it's probably one of the best ways to avoid uh, accidents is uh, just have a dented car and everybody gets out of your way. So uh, it worked for me. I uh, highly recommend that. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, we have over 30 different metrics uh, that are, uh, and this is now um, Mexico, I guess, yeah. Uh, and you can see here road network, land usage, demographics of people uh, in the country. Uh, and based on all these different metrics, we're comparing this now to the number of accidents happening on these square meters or square kilometers, uh, and also how severe these accidents are. And then we start to correlate them. So we can say which of these input metrics are actually having an impact on, these, uh, on the accident risk. And based on that, we can actually predict 
uh, how these accidents will happen in the future. And one of the things we can do is also on a road level, right? We can say which road is more accident prone than others. <coughs> and we're not using this based on you know, single expertise and somebody just knowing about this, but we know it at a global level and we know it for every road that's out there. Um, so what can we do with this? Uh, in a simple way, uh, and again, this is very hard to read, uh, it allows you to get a map of each country and where are the risks. And uh, this can be generally used. You can use this with your clients, right? You can say, where will these accidents happen and avoid certain roads, for example. But you can also start to compare it to your portfolio. So you can say, what's my distribution of motor insurance that I have? Where am I overexposed, underexposed, and where do I obviously have opportunities to go further? Right? I can say that uh, we need to do more business in a certain area. Now, what it doesn't allow you to do is actually define concrete pricing. Because it's publicly general information, you need to add the customer. Now, who knows the customer? I would hope that's you. Right? You know your customer, you know the demographics, you know the uh, driving skills, you know the accident proneness of your drivers. If you combine it with this data, it allows you to do very specific pricing and start modeling where do you want to go next. Uh, we also have data around um, natural catastrophes, um, publicly available data that allows you to say what's the overall risk for people driving on roads. And combining this with the individual knowledge of uh, the drivers that you have, you can be much more specific about your motor portfolio. Right? Uh, where do we do this? Uh, so we have data pretty much globally available. For Eastern Europe, we already have very concrete patterns identified for certain countries. For others, we already have the data, but we need a partner. We need somebody to work with us to actually take the data that we have and make it realistic for your specific portfolio. And based on that, uh, we're always looking for opportunities to grow this further. Okay, uh, moving to the next one. I'm uh, speeding up a little bit. I know we're a little bit behind. Uh, claims development tracker. So the other end of the spectrum, this is something we're doing purely within Swiss Re. Um, and again, it's a reinsurance focused thing. So how do you handle claims? Well, for us, it's mainly finding a needle in a haystack. It usually means that uh, based on the amount of data we receive from our clients, the amount of volume we receive is pretty much impossible to analyze fully and figuring out the claims that we really should pay attention to. So we started to think about what makes a difference? What are the elements that make us better at finding these needles in the haystack? On the one, high, on the one side, we have the claim handler. We have the experts uh, that have been with our company for 30 plus years. They know their markets, they know their environments, and they're quite good at this. They're quite good at looking at a single claim and saying, do I need to pay more attention, yes or no? Uh, on the other hand, uh, again, he or she cannot look at everything, again, based on the volume of data. So uh, we started to invent a technology, this claims development tracker, that is basically reducing the size of the haystack. So we're trying to eliminate the cases that are not relevant anymore. And how do we do this? And this is impossible to read. What we basically did was, and this is a big data uh, technology, uh, we look at every single claim that Swiss Re receives, and every time we receive an update from our customers, we start to plot it on this graph. And uh, this is normalized data, and it's basically showing incurred amounts over time. So starting in the lower left-hand corner, and then over time, the incurred keeps going up until it reaches the ultimate, right, 100%. So we do this for every single claim. And when you plot this on this graph, you start to see actually patterns in there. So you start seeing that certain claims behave a certain way than others. And based on that, we can predict what's the standard <coughs> curve of certain types of claims behaving. And, uh, we overlay now our new incoming claims. So a new claims comes in and it starts to follow a pattern that we know about. And as long as it's following that pattern, 
it's, it can be removed from our haystack. So we can actually deduct and say, we don't need to worry about these particular claims. Um, only when it jumps out of the line, and you don't see the line here, but these two red dots are showing that the claim is actually um, higher than the expected incurred. And based on this, we need to start taking action. Now, this doesn't mean that uh, we automate everything, right? We talked about digitization and automation. This is a technology that is supportive of what the claim handler does. In fact, the way this works is that, and again, this is not possible to read, our claim handlers, um, when a new claim comes in, they have a certain error rate of predicting where the claim is going. So in this chart here, the red line starts at 100, meaning 100% um, um, change within the ultimate cost of a claim can occur over time. So if the claim will be, is expected to be a million, it can be going up to two million or zero. So a huge range. At the beginning of the claim, we don't know much about it. Now over time, and this is now over 100% of the timeline of a claim, about halfway through, uh, the claim handler gets actually pretty good at predicting how these claims will develop. And obviously at the very end, when everything is paid, it's 100%, right? We know exactly what we paid. Now, uh, let's put our new technology on top of this, and this is the blue line. Um, it actually, at the beginning of a, of a claim, it's not that good at it. So uh, it has to, we have to start figuring out, does it start to follow a certain pattern? But then again, about 30%, so a, a third of the time through, um, the system predicts better results of the claim than a claim handler has ever done. And uh, then, so this, the curve now is below the red line, meaning the system is better. And uh, the gap that you see there is basically our benefit. Uh, and we're using this benefit on two different levels. The first one is pure claim uh, prediction, and based on that, how much effort we want to put into this claim. If it follows the pattern, and if the claim handler is comfortable with it, let's not worry about it. And this should be around 90% of all the claims that we have. For the remaining 10%, this is where we want to put the effort. And this is where we're seeing there, uh, where our claims handlers are able to refocus and get much higher percentage of fraud detection, of um, working with our customers, figuring out where we should put our efforts in. Uh, and that resegmentation is something that you can benefit from, but obviously always the end customer, because we have way less concerns around these claims, but the ones that matter, you as a customer of ours should benefit from as well. Now the other thing is uh, reserve management. So we are now starting to use this technology to uh, define our full reserves. So based on that, we can be better uh, than the current averages and uh, other ultimate calculations that we're doing. We're actually doing now a bottom-up calculation of our claims. So we're taking every single claim, we're saying how it will behave in the future, and we're adding it up, and we can be much more specific around our financials uh, and the reporting that we need to do. Uh, and uh, you can see, obviously, throughout the uh, life cycle of these claims, uh, just because they keep getting better, we will be able to get better also at this prediction, uh, and we're starting a roll forward mechanism that allows us to benefit from this uh, improvement over time. Okay. This was the quick presentation uh, on claims development tracker and the uh, strategic motor uh, risk map. Um, we have a lot more technology pieces. Uh, I thought I'll keep the focus on these two items. Uh, but uh, during the break, if you're interested in some other ideas of what we're working on right now, I'm happy to share that with you. All right, thank you.